So Bleu de Chanel is a very popular men's fragrance that was launched in 2010. It comes in eau de toilette concentration. But did you know that there was an eau de parfum concentration? This is the EDP edition. And uh, the original doesn't have EDP listed on it. I mean, EDT listed on it. But Ashley's here today. Hey and we're going to go ahead and compare the two fragrances. And we're going to tell you all about these two and which one we prefer. And we're going to do that coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time on this channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell icon so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And Ashley is here. Hey She's guys. actually going to a perfume school yeah. in Paris. Tell us a little bit about your perfume schooling. So I go to Isipka. Um, it's right outside of Paris in a suburb called Versailles. And I am in the Masters of Science in Scent Design and Creation program there, which is in collaboration with IFF. And it's a three-year program. I just finished my first year there, and I start back up again in September. Cool. Yeah. And you want to be a perfumer? Yes, I would love to be a fine fragrance perfumer. That's the goal. And have you met any perfumers? Uh, yeah, I've been super lucky. Um, I've met a lot of the IFF perfumers like Dom Negropion and Flippo, um, and that has been super duper cool. I think for me, it's like meeting a rock star. Like I cool. fangirl out and everything. How about the the perfumer behind these two releases, Jacques Polge? I haven't. You I haven't? wish. Yeah. <laughs> They are kind of rock stars. They so. are, absolutely. Well, cool. Maybe we'll do a video later about your experience yeah, at the school. Yeah, that would be super fun. Cool. So, again, going back to Chanel, Blue de Chanel, and this is the EDP, and this EDT? is the EDT. Yeah. Are you a fan of Chanel, Blue de Chanel? Yeah. Um, I like the EDT and the EDP. Um, and there are pretty like noticeable differences given how similar the bottles are. Like These are not the same juice, in my opinion. No? No. Not at all. But I like both. I do prefer the EDP, but I do like both. Me too. I prefer <laughs> the EDP. Yeah. And uh, several, I guess a year ago, I did a video with a, a friend of mine mm -hmm. comparing Blue de Chanel, Sauvage, and Mr. Burberry, and we were talking about the dumbing down of fragrances. Right. And we were pretty harsh in that video, but I've turned around and I mm -hmm. really love the EDP, EDP. version. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And I find the original to be very sharp, metallic, synthetic. Mm. Doesn't smell as good as I want it to be. It's right. not well rounded. And this one is softer, yes. more creamier, more just perfected. Yeah, it's a lot smoother. Um, I think when I first smelled the EDT, and I didn't smell the EDP for a long time afterwards. I like the EDT. Um, you know, if like a guy friend recommend asks for a fragrance recommendation, I always give a list, but this would always definitely be on it. I thought it was a very well done men's cologne. Um, nothing to write home about, but totally fine. You know, I think it's a compliment getter. But true, once, true. yes. But once I smelled the EDP, I felt like, wow, like this is Chanel getting it right, really figuring out Blue de Chanel, really? I think, yeah. Do you think they might have rushed in with the release of Blue de Chanel, or was that just an experiment they tried? They thought, okay, are we going to succeed with this? You know, I think smelling that, like the comparison, you know, it would. I could see where you would say that absolutely, but I feel like Chanel puts a lot of time into it. Maybe even more so than other houses. I feel like they're really into perfecting the thing. Um, Interesting. But yeah, at the same time, Blue de Chanel, it, it's a better product, in my opinion. It's It seems more completed. The EDP seems more completed. Interesting. So it's hard to say, but yeah. Fragrance alone, yes. Knowing Chanel, not that I know Chanel, but... <laughs> you don't know Coco? <laughs> no. <laughs> so let's go over the notes a little bit with this, because there are differences, although most of them are the same. Mm -hmm. For the EDT, it was launched in 2010, and the perfumer behind it is Jacques Polge. Notes are not broken down into top um, heart notes and mid uh, uh, base notes. Mm. They're just all, um, as you can see, on Fragrantica. And again, these are notes we're taking from Fragrantica. The Chanel website doesn't list their official notes. So what they have at the top, most dominant note, grapefruit, incense, ginger, lemon, mint, uh, vetiver, cedar, nutmeg, pink pepper, uh, sandalwood, patchouli, labdanum, and jasmine. The EDP version 
comes uh, came out in 2014, ten, uh, four years later. Again, the same perfumer, Jacques Pauge. And for notes, you've got grapefruit, incense, amber, which is not present in the EDT. Right. And that's what makes it different for me, I, I think. I think so too, yeah. So then you also have lemon, vetiver, mint, cedar, woody notes, ginger, pink pepper, patchouli, sandalwood, labdanum, jasmine, and nutmeg. So most of the notes are the same, right. except for here they've got amber, amber in it. Yeah, and it makes all the difference, I yeah. think, yeah, to smooth it out. I think it's the difference between the harshness of this and the smoothness of that. Do you think a lot of fragrances are, or brands are copying mm -hmm. this? This is like their... The test bottle, like it, they know it's a successful fragrance. Right. They know people are wearing it, men totally. are wearing it, and they're just like modeling it after. Yeah, um, and at the same time, though, it's not the most unique fragrance, you know. So I think absolutely, you know, they see this as a winning formula. But also, I think they knew this was kind of a winning formula before it even came out. You know, this kind of like very easy, approachable grapefruit eau de cologne. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Sauvage and uh, Mr. Burberry? Do you think those were kind of inspired by the whole blue theme? I think Chanel started it with blue to Chanel. Right. While well, the fragrances oh, are... Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Sauvage <laughs> it has that same coloring, yes. same inspiration. Okay, yeah. Packaging wise and just like feel absolutely. I thought like juice wise. Well, it's juice also, I think. Yeah. 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 Now I'm, I'm leading into the, the packaging and the whole blue theme is just like... It just kind of sounds like it's the same fragrance That's done yeah. a little different way because they know the formula works and men are going to flock to it and yeah. buy it. So. Yeah. And do you ever feel like maybe there's a little bit less creativity for men's cologne than there is in women's fine fragrance? I, I believe that. Yeah. And there's all, I mean, there's already so much copying, I think, within women's fine fragrance that it's even less surprising that when a winner like Blue de Chanel comes out, you just see like blue, 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 and yeah. that kind of... Interesting. Yeah. Do you... What do you think about... I know that this is a very popular, I mean, it sells yes. a lot. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if it's as popular as Aqua de Gio um, mm -hmm. by, by Armani. I've heard Ar Armani's Aqua de Gio is the most popular men's, uh, most, the best selling yeah. men's fragrance. And my dad wears Aqua de Gio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also think maybe slightly different market because I feel like, you know, my dad wears Aqua de Gio, whereas like my peer group wears a lot of Blue de Chanel. Oh. Yeah. Um, and again, maybe there isn't the same ageism in men's clothes. So I think a lot of young men still wear Aqua de Gio. But um, definitely Blue de Chanel is so popular among people, I think, and they're like in the 20s age group. It's not think, all age groups, but... Do you think that's because these are a little more modern compared to Aqua de Gio? It's yeah. The, the Aqua de Gio came out in like 90s. Exactly. And it's a newer release, so a lot of people are afraid of smelling like their dad or their grandpa when you're not a fragrance enthusiast. <laughs> or me, I'm like trying to find vintages. But um, yeah, I think it's a new release, so it kind of attracted also maybe a younger age group than Aqua de Gio. What do you think about this and comparing it to Aventus? I think both of these fragrances are really, really popular yeah. in um, in fragrance community. Yes. Uh, I know a lot of my following likes the two mm -hmm. and that are always looking for, uh, I guess, uh, less expensive versions of those scents. Totally, yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to Aventus because it's so expensive compared to the Blue de Chanel's. But yeah. Um, I think they're both super likable. It's, a, it's their compliment getters. Um, what's funny is that I feel like the press copy for this says it's for the unconventional man, which I think is very funny now that it's so popular. Um, but <laughs> That's funny, huh? <laughs> it is. And I think definitely, I mean, if Aventus is a really pricey bottle perfume, and if you just want a likable compliment getter, I think this does the same thing. I think the lemon note in it does the same thing that the pineapple note for Aventus does, where it has like a fruitiness that makes it approachable, and then it's kind of underscored by the amber. Mm -hmm. um, the amber in here. The amber in the EDP, yeah, yeah which so, is not in the EDT. EDT. So what do you, which one do you prefer then? You said the EDP, EDP right? EDP, hands down. And yes. would you wear this one? Yeah. I think that one is way more unisex than the EDT. The harshness, and maybe it's just because I probably wouldn't wear this because of the harsh note you're talking about, but smoothed out by the amber, I think it makes it super unisex. I don't know what it is about the harshness in men's releases lately, but yeah. I'm a very sensitive person, and mm -hmm. I think that one, the harshness kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. So I tend to stay away from it. But this one I absolutely love. It's my yes. gym scent, and uh, it's the fragrance I wear if I don't want something complicated. Mm -hmm. 
just in every day because sometimes I get burnout mode from like really intense fragrances, which is what I'm mostly into. Yeah. And I don't want to think about it when like I'm rushing around and I just want to grab the fragrance and spray a bit and leave. Mm -hmm. I'll smell great, not overwhelmed, but I'll get compliments yes. because it's so likable. Because I wouldn't say this is heavier than this one. No. I feel like they're both nice light fragrances that you could absolutely wear to the gym or the office. It's not something that someone is going to be like, oh, you're wearing too much perfume. <laughs> um, they're really easy wears, which is what you want sometimes. Sometimes you just want a nice likable fragrance. And I think they both do that. I think the Eau de Parfum does it better. But um, some people, I think I'm a little sensitive to synthetics. And I think a lot of fragrance enthusiasts are. And this just has that kind of synthetic harshness that you associate with a lot of designer fragrance releases. Um, but if you're not sensitive to that, then you know this could also be a perfectly good choice. Yeah. It's still a really good fragrance, I think. I think it is, yeah. I mean, I prefer this one, but <laughs> let's, let's quickly do the pricing. So what we've got is, um, so these are the 150 ml bottles. Mm -hmm. And the ED, so the EDT for you, I mean, it comes in multiple sizes on the Chanel website. We can see that it comes in at 1.7, which is 50 ml, 3.4, which is uh, 100 ml, the 5 fluid ounce, which is 150 ml, mm -hmm. and then the 10 fluid ounce, also an EDT. That's a lot of juice. Like, yeah. I'm going to take a bath with it. Mm -hmm. But as far as the 3.4 ounce EDT goes, it's 95. So it's under 100. It's yeah. a good price, yeah. I think. I think for me personally, if it's a dollar per milliliter or less, I'm super happy with it. Okay. Um, when this falls into that category and you know, you get the prestige of it being Chanel, you get some really nice packaging with yeah. these magnetic, yeah, the magnetic closures. Is awesome. um, so I think it's well worth it for the price. Okay. It's a, they're well done fragrances. Especially the EDP. The EDP, yeah. So the 3.4 is, is 95, the 5 ounce, the 150 is 128, which is that bottle there. That's what I have. Thing. And then also the 10 ounce is 225. That's a lot of juice though. Yes. So as far as comparing it to the EDP, the EDP in 3.4 ounce is 115. So it's $20 more than this. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, again, these are both 150 mil. So the, the 150 mil and five ounce is $150. So okay. you get more juice for a little more money, yeah. double, almost double the juice, I think. Well, no, not double the juice, but half the size more juice. Yeah. <laughs> and but I this, think when you prefer the fragrance, you prefer the fragrance, and it's, it's a difference, but it's not a huge difference in price. No, let's spray this one on, because I really like this yeah. one. Again, I think what they've done, ooh, it smells good. It does. What they've done is they've taken their original experiment, mm -hmm. which is the eau de toilette, and they've fine-tuned it, yes. smoothed over all the sharp notes, mm -hmm. and come up with a more well-rounded, balanced fragrance. fragrance. Yeah, yeah. yeah I prefer this one yeah. a lot more. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's just the amber. It might even be just as synthetic in composition as this one, but whatever amber they added really completed the composition and made it really beautiful. Cool, yeah. Well, guys, do you know about this fragrance? Do you know? I'm sure you know about this fragrance. <laughs> but uh, do you uh, have you compared the EDT to the EDP? Um, if you haven't, because I understand that EDP is not as readily available in department stores right. as the EDT is, so I suggest you get samples or decants of both and test them out if you haven't tested either. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a bottle of the EDT and you, do, you haven't tested out the EDP, do that and test it out. And I think you can see what we're talking about. Yeah. It's definitely a lot smoother more balanced, more well-rounded, I think. So do that. And also, do you, which do you prefer if you've tested both? Do you like the EDT over the EDP or the EDP over the EDT or you don't like this fragrance at all or you yeah. absolutely love it? Let us know so we can get a conversation started. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Yeah. Uh, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Have a good day, guys.